Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for tuning into my video today. Today we're going to be talking about this instrument and my updates I've made on it since my last update video. So, if you've seen my last video, you'll know that I've actually installed a few keys on the instrument. Um, I know I said that I was going to go from the bottom end of the instrument upwards. However, I decided to skip a few keys just because I had the parts on hand and because I had some good ideas that I wanted to test out. So, the three new keys on this instrument are right hand first finger, right hand second finger, and the B flat F key. So, with these, I can now play an additional four notes on the instrument. Um, I would be able to play more if I had the last body section installed, but I decided to take it off just so I could play a low A, so I could play four semitones in a row. So, here is how the instrument sounds at this point. First, I'm just going to play a concert B flat or a fingered C, and just a sort of a tuning note. So you may have noticed that the instrument actually sounds a lot better than it did last time. And that's because I made a ton of changes to this instrument that I think will greatly improve both the playability and the tone. So when you're trying to improve how an instrument plays, you're essentially trying to reduce the stuffiness and improve the response. Now for those of you who may not know, stuffiness is sort of when a note doesn't speak clearly. It kind of hesitates. It's muffled. And um, that was a problem with this instrument. So then the notes just didn't speak clearly and they were hard to play. So there are several ways to solve this. Now the most obvious solution and something some of you guys mentioned was larger tone holes. Now I would love to put larger tone holes on this instrument, but unfortunately that means having to buy another instrument to steal parts from. And I already have way too many instruments right now and I just don't need to buy an instrument that I'm just gonna take apart. So I'm trying to use the parts that I have. So the next thing that I could do is I can undercut the tone holes. Now, undercutting is essentially you're taking that inside edge of the tone hole and you're sort of putting a bevel on it. But that's just one type of undercutting. There's also rounded undercutting, where essentially you're rounding that edge off. And rounded undercutting is much better for improving the response with a little bit of sacrifice to tone. Over, I think I can afford that. So. I essentially rounded off the inside edges of the tone holes and that greatly improved the response and the uh, reduced the stuffiness of the instrument. So that was one big update that I made. Now the second thing I did was I also increased the venting of the notes. So um, before it was uh, the pad cups were pretty close to the tone holes and um, essentially that makes the note stuffy because there's uh, less room for the air for the note to escape. So what I did was I essentially just made it so it opened up farther. So um, the key throw is a little bit larger, but now the notes speak much more clearly, and that's a compromise that I'm willing to make. And the final thing that I did was with the mouthpiece. Now I'm using a Phobes Debut Contrabass clarinet mouthpiece, which obviously isn't ideal for such a large instrument, but it's what I have, so it's what I'm using. Now the mouthpiece is, I believe, uh, Clark Phobes kind of works on the facing a little bit, but he doesn't really do a lot to the inside of the mouthpiece. So what essentially I did was I cleaned up the inside dimensions of this mouthpiece and sort of made it more along the lines of a professional mouthpiece. And that, once again, improved the tone of the instrument greatly. So with all these improvements, the instrument now sounds much better than it did. It actually sounds like a serious clarinet now, which is exactly what I want. So I'm just going to play a few more notes on the instrument just to give you idea of how it sounds like. And I'll also play some notes in the upper register because I also, another update that I did was I installed a small register vent here so that I could play the upper register. I think that most people want to hear the lower register of this instrument. I think the upper register of this clarinet sounds absolutely amazing. It essentially corresponds to a contralto clarinet, but um, in tone quality, it has more overtones. It just sounds beautiful, in my opinion. So I'm very happy that um, I think this instrument will be a really good uh, player when it's done. So now I have a confession to make. So 
When you're making clarinet keys, ideally you'd want to make them from scratch with the exact dimensions that you would want on the instrument, and um, I didn't do that at all. What essentially I did was I stole the keys from a bass clarinet. So you may have noticed that this key right here actually corresponds to the um, right hand third finger key on a bass clarinet. Essentially what I did was I took two of them, flipped, rearranged them around, and uh, made them work for this instrument. And I also kind of did something cheating on the, uh, the F key. So normally when you make a key this long, you would get a uh, piece of a uh, nickel silver rod stock, you would um, solder your touch piece and your pad cup to it, and you make the key. However, I didn't really want to solder this key, so I kind of cheated a little bit. So imagine looking at this from an engineer's perspective. You have two rods, essentially, that you need to connect. So you could weld them together, or you could attach them with a cup link. And that's exactly what I did. So there's a little cup link here that connects these two rods. And I also flattened the internal edge so that these set screws would hold tight so that there's no risk of the key falling apart or slipping. And I've never seen this done in an instrument, but it actually worked really well. The key is nice and responsive. It's not, I tried bending it, it's not loose at all. So I think for a prototype instrument, this is a really good, easy way to save a bit of time and even a little bit of money because uh, the gas that I use for soldering um, map gas and uh, oxygen is actually really expensive. It's like uh, $10 a bottle for oxygen and it only lasts a few keys before it runs out, which is quite unfortunate. But um, so with this method, I greatly simplified how the instrument was built. So the instrument is definitely coming together. I'm really happy with my progress so far. Um, I mentioned in, in one of my previous videos that I'm going to try to get the lower joint done by Christmas, and I think I'm on track for that, although I don't know if I'll quite meet that goal, but I'm very happy with how the instrument's coming out so far, and I just wanted to share my progress with you guys. So thank you for tuning in today. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll be sure to answer them. Also, I just want to say thank you for 100 subscribers. I really appreciate that you guys are interested in this project and want to see what I'm doing. That just makes me feel so happy that people care about what I do and uh, care about the same interests that I do. So thank you again. Um, if you're not already, please uh, consider following my Instagram at Windows Repairs. I post pro pictures of this project along with some other projects. Um, all right, thanks everyone for tuning in. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend.